In business, we're often taught to simplify things. And when it comes to going offshore, people think offshore company equals tax savings. Now, if you know about offshore companies, you realize that an offshore company is just a company that's in a different country than where you're living. And that country may offer zero tax, it may offer other benefits. But if your goal is tax reduction, there is one piece that will get in people's way more often than almost anything else when it comes to offshore company equaling tax reduction. There's a piece in the middle that trips most people up because they're only focused on the incorporation side. They're only focused on the money collection side. And they're not focused on the laws where they're living now. The piece that they're missing is the controlled foreign corporation law. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. These CFC rules, Controlled Foreign Corporation rules, are something that most people have never heard of. Now, I'm going to keep it rather simple. I'm going to avoid all the complex language because we're talking to people in a lot of different countries. And so I just want to get the main point across. Your specific situation, your specific country is going to have its own little nuances. But the bottom line is this. If you live in a high-tax country, whether it's the US, Australia, UK, Canada, whatever, and you have a country somewhere else, but you're running that company from your country, your government's going to consider that a local company. So let's take the most obvious example. We've talked about before, somebody in let's say Australia goes to Hong Kong and says, hey, we heard that if we check some boxes, we can pay zero tax in Hong Kong. So why not just set up a Hong Kong company? So we set up a Hong Kong company and then we go back to Australia and we live. We are Australian residents. Well, Australia is to say, well, hold on. You own the majority of that company. You are the mind and management or you are the central management. Again, different terms in different places of that company. So what is Hong Kong other than a piece of paper? The CFC rules that exist in the country that you live in were designed to stop people from doing exactly that because wouldn't everyone like to pay no tax? Wouldn't everyone like to simply go to Nevis, set up a company, and then come back as if nothing has changed? The challenge is that's not possible. And so we've talked before in other videos about how in the 21st century, you have to not only move your assets, but you have to move your ass. You have to be both personally and on a business level structured in the appropriate way to where you're not going to trigger these CFC rules. So what that means is if you own a company that's offshore, you need to be offshore too. That means in my aforementioned scenario of the Australian resident, that person should remove their Australian residence so that then they will be taxed on where they become resident. And if with proper planning, you can set that up to where the new residents won't tax them, you could have a company that won't tax you, you can pay very little money in tax. But what you can't do is pay very little money in tax and just keep living in your high tax country pretending. Now, there are obviously people who have complicated companies. They've got offices all over the world. They've got uh, managers in different countries. They've got corporations for all their offices. It gets tricky. Okay? In those cases, obviously, there is a lot more nuance where, okay, I have a US company with some workers and we're gonna pay a little bit of tax because the money's coming in to pay those workers and, and, and the money all moves around. There are ways to structure that. That's the same way Starbucks, Apple, and other companies that have physical presence and management in each of these countries run it. But for the average one-man show or for the average small company, it's really important that you're moving yourself and your company offshore so that you don't trigger this CFC rule. What some people will do is they'll say, well, hey, I'm just going to get some other person to own my company, a so-called nominee, nominee shareholder, nominee director. The principle is the same. You know, the government has figured this out. They figured out that People are going to go and put their brother's name on a company, which, by the way, sometimes gets them in more trouble because now the brother gets himself into a tax situation and then it's even, you're even worse off. But you know, the government wants to know who's the ultimate beneficial owner. And so when you file your tax return every year and you've got to say, you know, am I the ultimate beneficial owner of a company? Am I in control of bank accounts owned by a foreign company? You know, if you are the one who's receiving the money, then you're the one who's supposed to report that. 
the fact that you're running your company, even if someone else owns it, is still a problem. And so this is something that governments around the world are getting much better at cracking down on through all the information sharing that's going on. There are new things like you know, the Cayman Islands now are going to be opening up their corporate registry. You've got CRS, you've got FACA for bank account reporting, you've got more transparency than ever. And so all these little tricks that people have used to avoid what's always been the law are going away. If you want to avoid these CFC rules, one of the, the biggest things that sucks unsuspecting people back into the tax net, you need to do proper planning on both the personal side for where your personal residence is of the management of the company, as well as making sure the traditional company is structured well itself. Without both elements, you may have a problem. I'm Andrew Henderson, and if you're looking for a way to legally reduce your taxes, build your freedom, and create wealth faster as a global citizen, then you've come to the right place. I want you to do three things right now. Number one, click the button to subscribe to our channel. Make sure to get notifications so you never miss a new video. Number two, get a copy of our number one best-selling book, Nomad Capitalist on Amazon, and learn all of the dozens of benefits of our lifestyle. And number three, if you're already a six or seven figure entrepreneur and you want to put these strategies in place, Go to nomadcapitalist.com and find out how to get some help.